Shoreline Restoration Project. Sounds great. Looks wonderful. It's supposed to improve fishing and habitat for aquatic animals. But what's in it for me? Why should I care about lakeshore restoration? Well, there are main, three main issues that shoreline restoration can have, which, if done, will create a positive impact on the lake for lakeside landowners and recreational users. Reducing the algae blooms, reducing swimmer's itch, and reducing the frequency of yellow grubs and other parasites found in panfish. Phosphorus. One of the main, the main positive changes that shoreline restoration can have on a lake is a reduction of phosphorus levels in the lake. Phosphorus is a nutrient that acts like a fertilizer to aquatic vegetation. Algae is one of the aquatic plants that u utilizes phosphorus to increase its numbers as we've seen by some of the algae blooms we've experienced in Pelican Lake. Increasing shoreline restoration can have a positive effect of reducing the amount of phosphorus in the lake. This can lead to a reduction of the algae growing in the water and therefore decreasing the severity and numbers of the algae blooms. A decrease in algae has a somewhat surprising secondary positive effect, decreasing the number of snails found in the lake. Okay, snails. Algae is one of the most important sources of food for snails. Snails are an intermediate host for two different types of parasites. An intermediate host is a phase of the organism living in one of its larval forms. As you will see in the next couple of slides, snails are an intermediate host for swimmer's itch and for yellow grubs found in many panfish. Here's a life cycle of the parasite that causes the swimmer's itch. You can see down near the bottom of this image there is a snail as part of it. Once the waterfalls, which are infected, release eggs out into the water. These then will hatch and swim into a snail where they live and change into a different form. It takes a little time and then they're released out of the snail to swim in the water and in the natural cycle reinfect a waterfowl like a duck or meganser or something like that. But what we find unfortunately is that they will try to burrow into our skin causing swimmer's itch. And to be clear, reducing the number of algae in the lake, thereby reducing the population of snails, is no guarantee that swimmer's itch will be eliminated. But since there's a cause and effect with snails in the middle of this cycle, reducing snails should reduce the incidence of swimmer's itch. And the life cycle of the yellow grub is shown here. It's one of the uh, worms that most commonly affect the perch and panfish. And again, down at the bottom, you can see that the snails are in the middle of this cycle. Uh, birds, aquatic birds like great blue herons and loons that feed on panfish. Smaller fish will uh, be infected, release their um, eggs into the water. These eggs will hatch and swim into snails where they lay in there and develop for a while. And then they're released in a different form and then they swim into the panfish perch and uh, they live in there until they're eliminated out or until they're eaten by the waterfowl and that's how they become infected. So as you can see on the image this life cycle is shown and when the uh, fish get e eaten they get back into the uh, waterfowl and the cycle continues but reducing the number of snails in the system should reduce the rates of yellow grub and these black dot in parasites that you see in snails and panfish. Shoreline restoration is no guarantee that phosphor le levels will be greatly reduced and thereby reducing algae concentrations. Reducing algae, which serves as a major food source for snails, is no guarantee that swimmer's itch and yellow grub will be reduced. But since there's a direct correlation between phosphorus, algae concentrations, the food source for snail, and a link between snails and swimmer's itch and yellow grubs, you can see that shoreline restoration can be a, an important tool in reducing these undesirable conditions in our lake. How can we reduce phosphorus in our lake? Um, shoreline restoration will reduce naturally occurring phosphorus which falls as rain. Shoreline vegetation will absorb this nutrient and prevent runoff from draining directly into the lake. Uh, acts as a barrier. Use of phosphorus free soaps in dishwashers and washing machines and reducing or eliminating lawn fertilizers or making sure they have zero phosphorus in their mixture also helps. 
and you can use lake water which has phosphorus in it to water lawns and vegetation along the lake shore it's completely legal and then you would be adding phosphorus to your lawn to your plants uh, and they could get an advantage from that and it would take a little phosphorus out of the lake 